ओके Hi everyone. There seemed to be a glitch with Zoom because of a couple of overlapping meetings or something. But sorry about that. Uh, we all dropped off, I believe. I'll just allow uh, the rest of the group to join back in over the next minute or so, and we can pick up where we left off. In the meanwhile, as we wait for the rest of the group to jump back into the new link, uh, if you guys have any questions, happy to take them. You can leave them on chat and we can talk through it. Thanks everyone for rejoining. Sorry about the technical glitch again. So we'll get started where we left off and we were basically just talking through the case study that we're going to be going through today. So I know that some of you just joined now, you didn't have the previous link. So quickly uh, to give you a one minute summary on what we were talking about. Uh, the way we'll do the session today is first, we'll try to understand a problem statement from a brand uh, that's leveraged Instagram advertising to be able to solve for their brand requirements. The brand in question is, of course, McDonald's in India. Um, a brand really etched in our memories and, you know, something that we're all extremely familiar with right down to the menu. It's the kind of impact they've had. Uh, they've been in India for a very long time, right from the time in the early 90s when FDIs were enabled and foreign companies were allowed to set up shop in India. So along with the likes of, say, a Coca-Cola, etc., McDonald's is one of the brands that came in back in 1995. And 22 years later, 
and of course, even today, they are operational 27 years later, but 22 years later, which is five years ago in 2017, they announced that they were shutting down about 169 outlets out of uh, the 430 they had at the time. And we were talking about how they entered India in a double franchisee model, which means that they worked with two entities in India to set up all their retail outlets here. One of the entities and McDonald's in the US had a legal conflict due to which it was a long drawn court battle that eventually McDonald's won. Uh, and also McDonald's then went on to acquire the franchisee with 100% ownership in the franchise. So uh, basically the company that they were having a legal battle against, they went and bought them out so that they're able to operate in India under the same franchise using the same set of resources and, you know, uh, properties, etc., that the franchise owned. So uh, that's where the brand has been from the perspective of where they were and where they are now. So to ensure that, you know, it's obviously a very tricky space to be a digital marketer when so much has happened. So many outlets have shut down, but the brand remains evergreen. And uh, 2019, which is very recently, about three years ago, they took over Connaught Place Restaurants Limited, the Delhi-based company, and are looking to now renew their in-market traction. So, uh, for example, if brands are looking to say, for example, um, grow from where they were or to where they were previously, it's always going to be a lot of effort. There's a lot of localization that a brand like McDonald's has done over time. And uh, with this localization, it has obviously helped them to, you know, ensure that they stay relevant in the Indian market. We were talking about how within India, there are so many different geographies that McDonald's caters to. And across these geos, uh, McDonald's has taken into account the sensitivities of people. It's taken into account the diet choices of people, whether they're vegetarian or whether they're non-vegetarian. What are the kind of meats that people eat in every state in India? And they've built solutions for it. So two-pronged marketing objective is what the marketer was uh, facing in 2019-2020, which was one is, of course, try to drive orders organically. So you all are aware that, you know, a lot of the FNB industry depends on food aggregators. Now, a brand like McDonald's or someone as large as a Domino's doesn't necessarily have to only rely on them because they've been around and they've built a much bigger brand name. And they've done this globally. So one of the core focus areas for the business was if everyone knows about McDonald's and everyone loves McDonald's, why should we place, you know, get orders placed through the Zomato or Swiggy app? And why can't we get customers directly to us? So for this, they built what was called the McDelivery app, where customers like you and I can simply download the app and get food at a better price from them. And uh, this is definitely something that, you know, allows them to mitigate that cost of aggregation or the cost of delivery or commission that a Zomato or a Swiggy takes away. So that's one business goal of McDonald's, which is how do we maximize profits in a country as large as India? So digitally native country and they want to get the app out there. So they're able to drive more organic orders. The second goal is more to do with the regional nuances. So there are weekly offers that a lot of, you would say, American fast food brands do in India as well. And these offers are all designed in a way to boost sales on a certain day for a certain time period. So for example, um, let's think about, <clears throat> can you all give me an example? Any brand that you're aware about that does a weekly offer on a particular day? And what is that offer? What is the brand? Any examples that come to mind? Pizza Hut Wednesday, great. Subway, Subway does like a special sub every day of the week, which is on discount. Zomato has offers that go on across the week, across. Yeah, don't cook Wednesday, I think that's Zomato. Amazing. So <clears throat> why do you think these offers are designed? What's the goal? Like, what are they trying to capitalize on?
to attract attention, to engage users, what else could it be? Excuse to order that day, fair enough. Increase midweek sales, very, very important. Now, India as a country has certain nuances that are very unique to only us as a country. Tuesday go low non veg nahi Some people don't eat on Wednesdays. Some people have other days. So, you know, there are these midweek days where we practice certain, I would say, religious or uh, spiritual based uh, guidelines that people have for themselves. So overall, brand sales gets affected, especially in the F&B industry. What they're trying to do is remain active seven days a week, right? And if they know that, okay, McDonald's is probably preferred by non-vegetarians um, or maybe equally as much as vegetarians as well, but there's going to be a hit in sales on Wednesday because people don't eat on veg. So they may run an offer on Wednesday. Similarly, there are many other nuances. It's a price sensitive market overall. So people are always waiting for an offer. So it's an excuse. Also, they try to create in your mind as a consumer for you to be able to order from them. Now, two-pronged marketing approach was required. This is a real case study. So it's a real scenario. Uh, I was in touch with this brand when they were building these plans out. And I can 100% validate for everything that you learned about. So once they re-established in 2019, they are ready to roll out restaurants. They have a huge delivery fleet. They have an app that's ready as well. They don't have any dearth of technological prowess to be able to, you know, improve the app if it's required. And uh, this is the two-pronged goal that they were given as a marketer. So now we'll see what was done more from the perspective of solving for these two problems. What was the approach that they took? And how would you as a digital marketer approach this? And we'll try to talk through that as a group today. I think we have maximum folks back in the class. So I'm going to now jump into the problem statement. For anyone who just joined in, sorry about the technical glitch once again. Uh, there was an issue with Zoom because of which we all got locked out simultaneously. Now, once again, identifying the problem statement and defining it very clearly. So... Reduce dependency on third-party aggregators. Leverage their large number of retail chains to be able to deliver directly. Right. Uh, one of the ways to do this is drive people to your website. As on today, people are even very comfortable ordering through mobile apps. People are downloading mobile apps, left, right, and center. So they too designed and built an app called Make Delivery. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone here uses it, but if you did, you would probably get pricing which is slightly more competitive compared to like a Swiggy or a Zomato because the aggregator commission is not involved. Here. Second goal, problem statement. Given Indian consumer habits, uh, you want to try and build deals on certain days of the week where consumption is low. So price drops or discounts or buy one, get one free happening on certain days of the week where they can try to drive maximum sales and increase the midweek offers that midweek redemptions that happen through the journey. Is everyone here clear on the problem statement that McDonald's had? Any questions here? Awesome. Uh, very clear problem statements. Now, let's try to figure out as a group between us. I'm, what I've done is I've put down the different steps on this slide that one would need to address as a digital marketer, especially on Instagram as an advertising platform. Um, so let's do this together. 
let's address each question one by one and i'd love to get your feedback on it and i'll also tell you how i will approach it then we'll see how they actually approached it and then we'll see what were the actual results of this campaign fair enough all right so first let's define our media objectives uh, what are our media objectives in this case i've already defined the two problem statements for you so as a brand marketer what would you tell me what are the two things that you want to do leveraging advertising media I'm waiting for your responses spread awareness to drive visitors to the app how do you drive visitors to an app don't you drive the app to their phone so you want to drive app installs maybe awesome so awareness for the app i've heard one i'm just writing it down so i have it with me then you guys said reach out to the right audience to generic rumpa that's what every brand in the world always wants to do further narrow it down for me so awareness and what are you creating awareness on shweta weekly offers okay great so awareness of weekly offers and the other was drive installs and awareness for the app social media brand building but you're not being too generic right like if if um your ceo asked you as a marketing head what's your objective you can't say brand building that even the ceo knows right but if you were more specific to say that i want to create awareness about a wednesday offer that we have that you know helps you get started somewhere great job real quick uh, app installs to drive traffic to website other than to the aggregator and keep users informed about weekly offers that's how i would also define my brand objectives target your already registered customers when you go to a mcd they ask your details target them. so that's one way of going about meeting your objective first let's take a few steps back neha let's define the objective repeat buying by regular buyers that's an objective you want to set up okay fair enough drive repeat purchases good tg we're not there yet. are we at tg no are we talking about tg i'm talking about media objective i am highlight the price benefit of ordering from swiggy versus ordering directly on the mac delivery app this is more from a comms than a messaging perspective we're not there yet ashita save that for later define your i'm going to the next point define your broad audience to maximize your reach so how would you go about defining your audience on instagram you guys have run ads manager you've seen targeting so you all tell me how do you define your broad audience this is where we put to test everything we've learned through the past few months and flash on our linkedin profiles age group okay profession uh i don't know how profession comes into play uh, not very relevant age group yes again mcdonald's honestly is an age agnostic brand um but we can think of interest is very important food habits location age 16 to 50 interest great uh rutwik again love it age segments different age buckets online behavior <coughs> is this person natively you know comfortable with online platforms with mobile apps with the internet social media small family uh is that something you can identify on instagram targeting puni the size of the family device 
I like this person from this Galaxy A31 device who said device. Device is an important factor. Device targeting. Audience that has in the past engaged with your page. Fair enough, uh, but you're going to retargeting out of it. So come back to the core audience, right? Let's define a core audience first. Let's not go all the way to retargeting because you need to target someone before you retarget someone. Demographics, yes. Device, demographics, interests, three things I'm noting down that I like. <clears throat> Occupation, who are looking for fast food in a busy midweek. I don't know about that. Uh, I think, I mean, regardless of whether you're self-employed or business driven, you still have to eat. So. I don't know if occupation is a filter that will allow us to become more accurate with the targeting group, but good thought. Thanks for putting it out there. Interest is great. Yeah, we've covered interest. Interest, demographics, device. These three I accept. Area and location, too basic. I mean, that's geography. So, you know, don't worry about that. <clears throat> Newly moved homes, away from family, birthdays, upcoming, friends' birthday. Interesting, you can do a creative campaign around life events, basically. Life events. That can be one area you can target. What else do you guys have? Can you target using income, Abhishek, on Instagram? Does Instagram tell you the income of people? Install base, uh, people who already installed the app, you mean. Let's assume no one has the app so far. We're going to launch it, right? We want people to download the Mac Delivery app. Yes, uh, income-based targeting is only available in the US. We're running an India campaign, so income is not an option for us at all. Life stage, mom and kids special offer, but here you have to create an offer for that. We never saw an offer being created for mothers and children. We saw weekly offers for price sensitive markets for religious reasons. So I'm not going to take that one, Rumpa, but again, great ideas coming from you. Uh, yeah, no, Abhishek, you can't identify no income. If you could, I wouldn't, I would have written it down, but uh, income is not something you can measure when you target. Lifestyle. Uh, again, I don't see how that ties in. I could be into sports. I could be into music, but I still eat food at the end of the day. So I would not target using lifestyle choices. Target Instagram followers of Falenko. Ayan, is that possible? Are you able to target the followers of another brand? And why Furlenko? Uh, how is it related? How is furniture related to food in any way whatsoever? Even if you were able to. So I'll tell you, you're not able to. Uh, you can't target Instagram followers of another brand or individual or anybody else. That, where people check in or location affinity. Uh, Vivek, how will you do this? I want you all to give me answers of what's actually doable. By the time we are here in this session today, I'm not being easy with you all because you all have already learned a certain amount of, uh, you know, advertising, Instagram related content. So, low income group who otherwise find brands like McDonald's expensive because of the offer they might try. Rumpa, we just spoke about it. You can't target people because they're low income. It's not available as a filter to you, right? On Instagram or Facebook. So that's out. Lookalike audience of existing user base. Great. We'll come to that later. Just think about core audiences, guys. Common interests of the pages liked or followed. Uh, Abhishek, again, we can't do this, right? We can't identify people by the pages that they like or they follow and then target them.
Yes, device you can target, device we've already captured. Current and seasonal events. Can you give me an example, Ayan? Yeah, you can exclude people by interest such as fitness, they probably won't order fast food. Ashita, but isn't everyone interested in fitness, whether or not they practice it? Everyone's interested, right? Everyone in this group, including the 45 of you and me, want to go to the gym tomorrow. So if you make an inference like, because you consume content on fitness, you won't eat McDonald's, you'll restrict yourself. So try to avoid that. Because see, it's as fitness is aspirational. Uh, the hunger for fast food is instantaneous. So that's the disconnect there. <clears throat> Raksha Bandhan, sisters, brothers giving treats for topical events, occasion based. Great example here, Ayan. You can choose tier two and towns, also localities with middle class, lower middle class households. Uh, so you'll try to target localities with middle class or lower middle class households and tier two cities and towns. Uh, what about the sales in the metros? So don't create new products. Don't open new restaurants. Just tell me if McDonald's wants to advertise a weekly offer in India, who should they target? Yes, you can target by time of day. Excellent day parting. That's a very, very good uh, point you bring up, Abhishek. And what time of day do you think it would be most ideal for you to run your ads if you were a McDonald's? Absolutely, like before lunch and before dinner, that makes a lot of sense. Great. Sounds good, sounds good. So, okay, now you guys have a sense of how will you go after a broad audience. Always start with defining your broad audience because you need to start somewhere, right? If your audience initially is not broad enough, you will not be able to build smaller subsets of retargeting pools within that. If you start with a small audience, the subset within that will be even smaller and it will never be effective enough for you to do good retargeting. So always start broad. Cool. <clears throat> Let's move to the next point, the third point figure out the best performing creative assets. So you've understood the two objectives we have. For these two objectives, from what you've learned in the past and in the last class, what do you think would be the best performing creative assets that you would leverage? Ayan, uh, students travel to hostel example you've given is too niche and too small a target audience. No, as a digital marketing manager of McDonald's, I'm thinking about India as a country. So one group of students that too who live in hostels is too small a subset for me to cater to. Question is, what are the best creative assets that you will leverage given the objectives that you know what they are? Carousels. Videos, single images, great. Sumit, I agree completely. Uh, Rutvik, further defining what the content can seem like. So visually tempting food content with the creator with bold text on the offer. Okay. Images and videos, okay. So um, I've got three formats so far. Images, videos, carousels. What else can we do? Testimonial, the content type. So let's come back to the format, right? Like the format of dissemination and not the what's inside the image stories okay <clears throat> stories definitely would work really well on instagram who remembers what are the placements on instagram where else can i run my ads except stories yes it will be multiple ads and you will a b test but don't tell me we'll figure the answer out i want you to make an informed guess of where would you start? You have to start somewhere, right? 
display network. No, it's called the audience network. A display networks on Google, audience network on Facebook. So great. Audience network, Reels. You can serve ad on Reels. You can serve ad on Messenger. Okay, that's a Facebook Messenger. It's a different app, but yes, ads can be served. IGTV, you can serve ads. That's correct. Reels we've covered, Kinjal. Where else? Feed. Yeah, Ashita, thank you for posting that. I thought all of you missed it. Feed is the most primary property, right, on Instagram where you can serve ads. So now you have feed, you have stories, you have audience network, and you have all these properties, placements, where you can serve multiple formats. We spoke about video, we spoke about carousel, we spoke about static images. Right? Okay, great. Let's move to the next one. Text messages uh, is not 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 relevant to Instagram or Facebook at all, right, Imani? Because that's sent via an SMS uh, gateway. Uh, it's not related to social media at all. Instagram Explore, yes, uh, Explore. When you're in the Explore tab, you don't see ads per se. But if you go into one of the posts and start scrolling on the feed or on the story you'll find ads. Influencers can be an interesting play as well. Yes, uh, but that's more of a content strategy. Influencers can be used on any of these placements on any of these formats. Okay, now how will we feed proof existing assets? Who remembers and can tell me what is the meaning of feed proofing something? <clears throat> yes, for our standing. Should I allow you to talk? Will that be easier? What is the meaning of feed proofing your assets? Yes, Ashita has got it right. Checking if your content works and is legible enough and is well designed for multiple different placements. So you have assets, which is either your video or your creative. These are what we call assets. These assets now need to be deployed on different placements. Koi feed pe ho gaya, story pe ho gaya, reels pe ho gaya, wherever you deploy the asset. Now the asset in its single form cannot be used everywhere. So if I have a static post, uh, which is on feed, what would I do to it to push it onto story? Exactly, I would adapt. So I would change the dimension from four by five to nine by 16. So that's what you call feed proofing assets. There's other ways to feed proof it like you add subtitles, uh, you design for sound off. Um, you can always, you know, bring in polls. You can make it more engaging in multiple different ways because you're not now catering to a TV or an OTT consumer. You're catering to a social media consumer. <clears throat> and for a social media consumer, it's obviously very important that you're able to deliver the content in the natively most you know, interactive experience they can get. Include emojis, that's a great one. Change the size or make it a video. Yeah, even if you have a static image, add a few animations and make it a video, no problem. Um, convert it into a GIF, no problem. Add a frame, add anything that makes it stand out. That's basically what we're trying to do here by feed proofing. <clears throat> Now let's decide on placements. Now, if I were to tell you that I am giving you the entire Facebook family of apps, 
uh, to run your ads as you wish. What placements would you choose? What is the meaning of placements? Not a single answer yet. Correct. Feed and story. In market audience, news feed, reels, great. Where the ad will be shown. Perfect. Discovery, Insta feed. All the answers pouring in now. Fantastic. So now, what are the placements you will choose? These are the ones you will choose. Great. Uh, ads manager, nahi, Ayan. That's, that's where we run campaigns from. Placement is where the ad will deliver to the user. Right? Placement is not an ad copy. A placement is the place where the ad will deliver. So either a feed or the story or the news feed or wherever. Ads manager. Why you guys say ads manager? I'm, I'm not following. Did I ask you a question to which the answer is ads manager? Messenger is a app within Messenger. There's only one placement, which is in the Messenger text itself. <clears throat> Reels is a placement. Okay, great. We can place it there as well. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. Is Facebook Marketplace a good place to show the ad? Maybe, maybe not. So once you run the ads, uh, you'll know. Not sure. Is your name Diksha or is your name Rahul? Awesome. <clears throat> you have a Rahul sir bracketed next to your name. I wonder what that is. But anyway, let's come to the next one. Let's define our Facebook campaign objectives. Um, you guys know what our media objectives are. So what objective will you choose on the Facebook ads manager when you run this, set up this Instagram campaign? Impressions is not an objective. App downloads is. App install, okay. Let's give it to Rumpa. App installs is one objective I will definitely do because I have to push the make delivery out uh, to as many people as possible. What's the next one? Or do I have a next one? So Radhika says conversions, Priya says reach. What does the rest of the group think? Page likes is not an objective. Zipali, what were the media objectives we had? One was to drive Mac delivery app for which yes, app installs, I agree. Was there another objective? Do you guys remember what? Correct. Weekly orders drive sales. Was that the objective? Engagement was the objective. Guys, come on. Offers, right? We had to drive offers. And we had to drive retention on offers. So, okay. Conversions. Anyone? Traffic to app. You can't run traffic. You can run traffic to app, which is like a re-engagement campaign to your app users. But uh, you don't need to do that at this point in time. Clicks. Is there an objective called clicks, Ritwik? So, Tisan, click through rate is not an objective, it's a metric, it's an output metric, right? We'll come to that when we come to campaign measurement. Website visits is an objective, but we won't optimize for it. Because why will we take people to our website? What will they do on our website? Conversations, no. Nowhere in the problem statement did we mention that McDonald's is not able to have enough conversations, right? Again, likes, likes, messages. You're going on saying like, share, like, share. When, when did the problem statement ever say enough people don't like McDonald's? 
sales, right? Either you try to drive awareness for the weekly offers, generated revenue versus actual estimate revenue. I've lost you completely now. Let's take a step back, guys. Our media objectives, let's, let's go back to the slide. What are the two problem statements? Now look at one and two and tell me one objective for each that you will select on Facebook Ads Manager. Okay, everyone's got one, right? Can you give me two? Yes, Diksha, how will you do that? What will be the objective we select when I go to campaign setup and I... Awareness, that's correct. It's simple awareness, guys. We want to make people aware that there's a weekly offer going on. Y'all are basically just giving me all the words you know, but it's important to understand what are the Facebook objectives. This is only for the ones who got it wrong. Uh, see, you've now done so much content and learning over this. By now, you should know what are different Facebook objectives that you can set up campaigns for. Uh, otherwise, everything you're learning is not going to be fruitful for you. And it's time you're investing this. So please, for those of you who got it wrong, Take this as homework, go back, Google different objectives available on Facebook and go through each one of them in detail with the definitions. Page like is not an objective, Priya. Please don't argue with me. Uh, page like is a part of engagements as an objective. Now, in this one and two that you see on screen, do you see anywhere that McDonald's wants to increase page likes? No, right? So it's not an objective that we want to optimize for. And no one has ever done business by increasing page likes, right? So don't try to uh, bring that in. So just guys, always focus on making sure that your Facebook campaign objective is in line with what is the objective or the problem statement of the business. So for these two problem statements, I would do installs campaigns for my delivery. And I would do either an awareness campaign or a conversions campaign for the weekly offers. Everyone on board with me, anyone has an objection to this? Reach awareness, either way works. All right, awesome. I know it took some time, but it's important to clarify the basics. There is something called offline conversions, but given the objectives here, that's not something we need to really optimize for. Yes, Diksha, you can do that. Once you have created awareness and you have a pool of people who've engaged with your ad in some way or the other, let's say you were running a video ad and you now want to target everyone who saw more than 50% of your video, with a conversion campaign, which has a clear call to action, buy now, redeem now, download, go to, into your app and, you know, redeem the discount. Things like that can be done progressively. Awesome. Now let's come back to the next one. What buying type will we leverage? Uh, what are the two ways that you can buy ads on Instagram and which one will you use for each of these objectives? No one remembers what are the two buying types. You got half of half of it right. The Twig has one now. Reach and frequency is a buying type, which can be used for awareness-led objectives. What's the other one? Auction. Fantastic, Roompa. Which one will you, you use for McDonald's?
auction okay fair enough uh, for app installs i will use auction and for awareness campaigns i can use either auction or reach and frequency if it's a reach campaign i'm running i will select reach and frequency as an option okay campaign duration what do you guys think will have to be the minimum campaign duration for this there's a maximum can sky can be the limit but as per you what should be the minimum your mcdonald's guys four days seven days that's all ho gaya seven days mein aware ho jayenge sab monday to wednesday two days rumpa how will you reach so many people in two days weekly offer but acha you're saying you'll do it every week before the offer that's fine you can do that ha you can do that neha fair enough okay so you're saying weekly do it for three days for the weekly offers and then continue for three months so do three days three days three days for three months okay interesting satishan has another metric called three months three days i don't know where he got this from but interesting okay two to four weeks is a bare minimum you guys want to keep that in mind if you're Building campaigns at scale, and there is so much thought going into what I want to run, when I want to run, right? So, uh, lastly, and quickly tell me, how will you measure the success of this campaign for both these problem statements? What will make the CMO CEO happy? Yeah, app install cost per conversion. Cost per milli. So, what is the conversion here, Ashifa? App install cost per conversion. So, can we say cost per install? Yes. Thank you, Himani and Pooja. So, what you guys could look at is the overall number of installs and what is the cost per install. Okay. For the second offer, weekly offers, what will we measure over there? CPM, okay. What can we can do better than CPM? Huh? CPM is what we pay Facebook every time it delivers one thousand impressions. Uske aage kya hua? We don't know. So measuring CPM is not the best metric for us. It's an awareness campaign, so the campaign will go to people likely to view the ad. But not click on the ad. So measuring CPC is also debatable. Views, yes. Cost per view, yes. View through rate, cost per view, exactly. These are metrics for an awareness campaign. If you're running video assets, these are great metrics you can look at. CTR I wouldn't for an awareness campaign because when you run an awareness campaign Facebook's goal is to make people aware Facebook's goal is not to make people click on the ad and if people are not clicking on the ad your CTR will be low and that's okay because your goal is awareness so always if your uh, campaign was conversions then CTR makes sense right because Facebook will then show the ad to people who are most likely to click and then you can see out of 100 people who see my ad two people clicked on it i have a 2% ctr all right fantastic cool so this is what we've done as a group of digital marketers as custodians for mcdonalds in india now let's see what they actually did when they did the same exercise and then we'll see the results okay so we'll just quickly walk you through all of that So first, define your media objectives. One was maximize the reach. Use teasers two to three days before every specific event. So some of you also came up with this. So good job. Define your broad audience to maximize reach. So let's look at the audience. They wanted to identify the percentage of audiences accessing through smartphones or feature phones. So device targeting something we also did. Good job. Understand affinity to pages, age, marital affair. so affinity to pages which is basically means people who are interested in pages related to food 
people who are interested in pages related to cooking, people who are related to pages interested in lifestyle, maybe. You cannot identify the page name and follow their followers, but you can identify buckets of interest and then target people basis that. Uh, and age and marital status, again, life events is something that we also thought about. And age is, of course, something with along with geography. That's a very basic targeting that everyone does. So no brownie points for that. Then there are other ways that you can actually improve upon your audience uh, filtering and finding. You can use Facebook audience insights. You can use Facebook IQ. Uh, they just give you some details about, you know, food industry in India. This is what the users look like. So you'll always find interesting nuggets of information that you can then come back and apply to your targeting. From a creative perspective, they wanted to include images, perusals, videos. We spoke about all three, I think, so fair enough. Uh, teasers edited from the main video for shorter forms of content. So the 10 seconds can go out, five, 15 second videos can go out on stories. Perusal ads for effective storytelling and driving people to the Mac delivery ad. So similarly, some of you spoke about how there's a price benefit. You can actually just deploy that by leveraging a carousel ad. Slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four, download. Then feed proofing your video assets. So McDonald's being McDonald's has TV ads and assets they can leverage. So using consistent creatives across both, optimizing the creative for mobile and making it thumb stopping, which means less than 10 seconds, disruptive videos, which will make me want to stop and watch. That's the goal behind calling it a thumb stopping video. Designing for sound off and on. So regardless of what the user is using by default, they will be able to see the content. And using asset placement customization. We miss this one. Uh, this basically allows you to upload multiple assets, one story, one feed, one reels into the system. Depending on where the ad is being shown, Facebook will automatically pick up the right asset and display it over there. So that's a simple tick mark on the ads manager when we're done setting up the campaign. You can easily set that up. Using playable ads, I spoke about polling, none of you did, but playable ads, which is you can do augmented reality content. Uh, you can do a lot of interesting things. So create buzz, create excitement, create curiosity, build teasers into the expert and scale your reach. So if you're doing IG, extend it to Facebook, extend it to Messenger and Audience Network, some of the things we spoke about. So good job from a campaign and creative planning perspective. Now let's see what they did at an execution stage. So they have multiple different objectives that they went with for brand campaigns, for the weekly offers, they did brand awareness and video views, two campaigns. For performance, they did app installs, website clicks, website conversions, app engagement. An app engagement campaign is when you have an existing user base of app installs and you tell them, go back into the app and do something that you want them to do. By type, they ran reach and frequency and auction both simultaneously side by side. Duration, I mentioned two to four weeks minimum. Segmenting and retargeting, a point that a lot of you were touching upon, using video retargeting to exclude people who've already seen the communication so that new people see the video. So if you've seen the video once, we'll try to then exclude you from the next impression so that someone new sees it. And using custom and lookalike audiences. Placements, we discussed a bunch of placement options for the brand campaign. They can use desktop and mobile feed and Instagram. For the performance campaign, Facebook desktop, mobile news feed, Instagram audience network. For the reach and frequency campaign, at least 50% of the target audience at a frequency of 1.5% each is what they want to reach out to. From a measurement perspective, cost per install we already discussed, it's at the bottom of the screen. They wanted to bring it to below 50 rupees, it was currently at 60 rupees, and drive at least X number of installs every day. So number of installs, cost per install. Now let's talk about the awareness campaign that's running on reach and frequency. They wanted to then deploy a brand lift study. A brand live study is nothing but a simple study that allows you to judge the efficacy of your campaign before and after. So simple questions like, 
it's served as a survey. Once the campaign is completed, you'll see a survey that says, do you remember seeing an ad from McDonald's in the last two days? Uh, the next time you want to eat fast food, will you prefer Fasos, McDonald's, Domino's, Pizza Hut? And they're trying to then understand, are you more favorable towards the brand? Are you recalling the brand? So now for a brand like McDonald's, moving brand lift is going to be very, very difficult because they're so well known. But if it were a brand new company like Eva's Pizza, that not everyone's probably aware about for those in Bombay, then you probably can expect a larger lift in the amount of retention that someone has for the brand. Everyone clear so far? I think we got it pretty close to the actual media team at McDonald's. But uh, you guys have now understood how the entire process works step by step. Any questions? If you have any questions, please do tell me now. Otherwise, we can move on and we can jump into the results of what McDonald's actually saw. Fantastic. Let's also quickly look at content formats they use for vertical videos for less than 10 second stories, images and videos for feed ads, text ad for Messenger and Facebook Marketplace. Measurement strategy, brand lift study, unique video views. They measured this by the count of views and the watch time. Number of app installs, cost per app install. This is the audience they went after, tier one and two cities in India using device usage data, those connected to Wi-Fi, because that symbolizes that you're either in an office or at home uh, and you're not on the street. So you're only being targeted when you're actually in a place where you can place the order, hence those connected to Wi-Fi. Custom audiences, basically people who've engaged with our brand in some way before, lookalike audiences, providing the custom audience as a source and telling Facebook to find similar people and behavioral audiences, anyone who's shown affinity towards food, fast food, quick food, smart food, all of them can be targeted. For brand lift study, only quantitative parameters are considered and qualitative. It's primarily qualitative, right? Because it's served through a survey. So you're able to capture even qualitative responses. Number uh, For quantitative responses, so you have your ads manager, it's telling you CPR, CPM, CPC, et cetera, et cetera. Wi-Fi is important for McDonald's specifically or for the food and beverage industry, Ashita, because you want people to see the ad, not when they're traveling, not when they're connected on mobile data. If someone's on Wi-Fi, it's a sign that they're either at home or in the office. And they're hence in a place where they can actually order food right now. Hence, for FNB, it's a good idea to target people connected to Wi-Fi. These are the results of the actual campaign that happened. Uh, there was a 6.1, meaning 6.1% increase in the number of people who remember McDonald's and the weekly offers after that. There was a 6.5 percentage point increase in people who have shown more intention to buy from the McDelivery app. So the question in the survey was, uh, are you more likely to purchase using the McDelivery app now that you know there's a discount? And 7% people surveyed said yes. Additional people said yes. And there was a 17% decrease in the cost per install over a period of time. Key takeaways that they had from this campaign. One is uh, minimal number of ad sets, reducing the auction competition, making sure that you're not confusing the system with too many overlapping audiences. So minimum number of ad sets, minimum audiences, broad audiences. Running campaigns with auto placement, which allows Facebook to then pick and choose where the user comes online and serve them an impression over there. Enabling creative placement optimization we just spoke about, which helps you to allow Facebook to pick up the right dimension of the advertisement for each of the placements it serves to. Uh, brand lift study, 
because to measure awareness campaigns, CPMs and views are seldom not enough. Especially for larger brands, they want more quantitative plus qualitative data. So they do brand lift studies. Running weekly offer and ads two days before and on the day of the offer was best timing. So what you guys said was spot on three days before and on the day of the offer. Day parting did not lead to increased number of orders. Hence, campaign ran always on. So to a point we discussed earlier, can we show the ad at a specific time? They tried it. It didn't work for them. It may work for somebody else. But since it didn't work for them, they then went on to run the ads in an always on manner. So these are the key takeaways that McDonald's India had from this campaign that they ran. With the approach that they ran, you already saw. Any questions over here? No questions? Awesome. With that, we come to the end of the session. Uh, thank you so much again for being so interactive. I know it wasn't an easy session and it was by design because you're now at the point where you can literally think like a marketer sitting at a McDonald's after this. So definitely really love all of the engagement and you know, participation that I saw today. And uh, I'll just quickly take a few questions. And in the meanwhile, you guys can also fill out a poll that's up on your screens right now. Do I do you end up spending more money if you put it on auto mode? There is no auto mode, uh, Neha, on Facebook ads. You decide the duration for the campaign and then you spend it. Day parting is effective for FNB. Uh, no doubt. It's also maybe if your business is something that's seasonal, something that's cyclical through the day, you can leverage it. It's business to business. Like auto select and placement. So no, you don't end up spending more. In fact, you spend less because you are giving more leverage to the system to be able to make decisions for you more intelligently. And at the end of the day, technology obviously supersedes the human mind in terms of the access to data it has to make those decisions of whom to show your ad, when to show your ad, right? Uh, thank you, Alpana. That's that's the goal, really. And uh, I know I've been a little tough on you guys also, but again, the intent is to make sure that you come out of the 90 minutes like a super evolved marketer who's no less than anybody sitting on this side of the screen or at a McDonald's. So I think you guys did a brilliant job with that. Day parting punis is when you're able to split your ad timings. I want to run ads 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Then I want my ad to deliver from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Then I want it to deliver from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So you decide the hourly slots within the day that your ad will actually deliver. Is WhatsApp marketing is effective? Yes, to a large extent to enable bookings. Uh, you can always use the WhatsApp for business app, run ads on Facebook that click to WhatsApp and take people to WhatsApp. So every time they click on your ad, it'll open up a chat with you. And as a business, you can set up a small autoresponder there and chat with them when you have the time or assign someone to do it. Any other questions I can help with? So if there's no more questions, uh, feel free to fill out the poll on screen and then drop off. It will obviously save money, Himani, because it's not delivering all the time. So it will be, I mean, you only get charged by the impressions you deliver or the clicks you deliver. So if you're doing less of those, you'll spend less. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I loved it as well. And you guys have been an awesome uh, audience through both of these sessions last Wednesday and this one. Thank you for also the accommodating on time. 
and i hope to see you guys soon again at another at another upgrade rise session until then please have a great week and yep the feedback is actually within the zoom screen it's a small poll pop up icon meha that appears you'll be able to see it if you can there's no link i can share to it actually and everyone who's still here has already answered so thank you for that they drove app installs and awareness how did they measure purchase they didn't measure purchase because they were never intending to drive purchases mcdonald as a brand rumpa is not worried about sales they are more worried about creating awareness they are more worried about creating you know they not really counting how many burgers got sold it's not in the business of that awesome thanks a lot everyone and i hope you have a great rest of the week and do take care and stay safe signing off goodbye